One in 10 construction workers are injured each year. In New York City alone, construction-related fatalities almost doubled in one year. The construction industry is one of the most dangerous in America. On today's Safety Zone, we are going to address the six ways to prevent construction site accidents and what every construction worker should know. Please welcome Patrick Tarrant, founder and CEO of Crane Management. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. Good to be here. So, Patrick, let's talk about the construction site. Why are they so dangerous these days? I don't think they're any more dangerous these days, but there's a lot more construction activity. So when you have more activity, you have more deliveries, you have more uh, buildings coming online, and you also, unfortunately, have more accidents. Percentage-wise, probably no more than historically, but it's still too high. Um, so we're not solving the problem of construction safety as well as we should. So what are we looking at? What Tell us what we need to do to improve safety, or are we doing the right things on the job sites? I mean, I know that there's been some newly construction safety mandates that have been issued. Are we doing all those kind of things right? Yes, we're doing them right, but we're, we're not putting the proper amount of training in the proper place. The guys on the, uh, on the ground level, I mean, of the organization, not the building, they're trained that you have to have a 10-hour OSHA certification to get on jobs. So that gives people a minimum level that, they're, that they know the basic safety. The upper level know the huge cost in insurance premiums for accidents. But I think, unfortunately, the in-betweens, the, the field management on the job site, and also in the United States, there's a tendency to subcontract a lot more. In Europe, I worked in Europe, and it's called self-performing, where one entity will hire the plumbers, electricians, carpenters, so you have what the OSHA refers to as a controlling entity, now has more of a, a, a more leverage and more interest in creating a safe environment. A lot of it is the environment changes from day to day. One day you're pouring concrete as a temporary handrail around, next day you're moving on to the next floor. The environment is constantly changing, you get constant deliveries coming in. It takes a lot more vigilance than we're deploying right now to keep that environment safe and to keep up with the changes as the site changes. Are those the biggest safety problems you think we're having is all that changes that occurs on the job sites? I mean, what would you say is the craziest kind of issues that you're seeing that it's just that the job sites constantly movement, all those kind of things that are happening? Well, that's the stage that the, 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 the whole thing is set on. But the biggest problem I find is lack of preparation. People come and they haven't prepared. I ran a very successful steel company for years, and when my project managers came to me and said, okay, we're ready to go, I said, okay, let me see. There are six resources you need to do this job efficiently. You need personnel, you need equipment, you need room to work when you get to the job site, you need the material, obviously, you need information, drawings, plans, and you need time. And I made up a sheet with all those six resources identified, and I'd say to my guys, okay, let's permit, P-E-R-M-I-T. Fill out your permit sheet and let me see that you've identified the resources that you need to get the job done. Now, if I don't give you, or if I short you on any of those resources, then I, you're off the hook. But if I give you everything you ask for, I want my pound of flesh. I want the job done safely, and I want it done within time. So are those six steps that you just described going to help prevent accidents on the job site? Peggy, they would eliminate accidents. I, I've said, I teach a class and I, I, I tell people, I defy anybody in this class to produce an accident report and we'll analyze it where all six of those resources was in place. Never happens. We have a tendency here to rush into a project when we have the resources needed to start. And I tell them, no, no, stop. You need to have all the resources to bring you to completion, to finish. We tend to rush into, in, into things. We come to the first justifiable obstacle, and then we say, oh, we didn't see that coming. Well, we're supposed to be construction professionals. We're supposed to see it coming. And if we sit down and think, and, I, and my favorite thing is, 
when we're in a marginal situation, I'm involved in what would be considered high risk. We put up cranes, we take them down, we attach them to buildings. And I say, when I see something that doesn't make sense, I say, guys, when this whole thing goes bad, we're going to look at one another and we're going to say, we should have known better. Well, guess what? We do know better. We know now what we will know two days from now after an accident. Let's put our heads together and let's revisit our permit sheet and see what we're short of. Are we improvising because we don't have the right equipment? And improvising is compromising. If you don't have exactly what you need, then don't do the job. Don't start it. So do you have a strong opinion on the president's immigration plan and how that will affect one way or the other a construction job site and safety? I don't know, Peggy, because uh, there's a lot of fear in the construction industry that pe people are going to get deported, which I don't quite honestly understand. Um, in, in Europe, they had the EU, which allowed the free movement of workers, so skilled workers could go from one country to another. Um, in Ireland, you had a lot of Polish workers showed up in this when this Celtic Tiger was going. Uh, they were in construction, they were in uh, the service business. And then when things after the crash in 2008, they all went back home. It was a common market. I was under the impression that there was going to be the free movement of labor and goods. But obviously not. I think that if you remove a workforce that's skilled, and whether they're documented or not, they've developed certain skills, those people have to be replaced. We're in the construction boom right now in the Northeast. Uh, is there going to be enough training on time? And how do we make sure the new people come in to replace people who may be deported? Uh, it's a problem that needs to be studied. Uh, it's not something that should be rushed into. Well, at least, Patrick, what you're saying, if they at least adhere to your six steps, maybe that's how we prevent accidents on the job site. Thank you so much for being with us. It's great to be here. All right. Well, that's our safety zone for today. Thank you again.